Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'd like to share with you 23 facts about reading from science literature, the research papers that we've accumulated over the past more than 30 years at this point. Of course we've learned a lot more than that, however in this video I'd like to share with you the things that I think are most fundamental for everyone to know who is interested in reading, reading more, reading better, faster, and have these as a groundwork, as a starting point, venturing off in exploring reading and developing your reading skills. So with that being said, and without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so fact number one, when we read, our eyes do not move smoothly. Instead, we perform jumps which are called saccades, followed by stops or pauses on the text, which are called fixations. And we alter between these two, saccades and fixations, all while we are reading. Okay, so how fast do we move our eyes now? The average duration of a fixation is between 200 and 250 milliseconds, about quarter to a fifth of a second. However, that's only average. In fact, a fixation could be anywhere from 50 milliseconds up to 600 milliseconds, and in some cases, even more. At any rate, this means that sometimes a quarter of a second is more than enough to process what we're reading and move forward. However, we have to also take into consideration the time that we need to jump from one word to another, meaning the time of the saccade. Now, the way this happens is that we first have to prepare for the jump, which takes roughly 200 milliseconds. And now the very jump while reading takes additional 20 to 30 milliseconds. And now if we take all of this information together, this means that we perform this saccade to fixation cycle close to three times a second. Okay, but what about the sizes of these movements? Well, that really depends on the amount of information we are able to cover during fixation. Now, the average amount of letter spaces is seven to nine, which means that the size of the jumps is also seven to nine letter spaces. And letter spaces means letters, also the spaces between words, punctuation, special characters, all of these things. And more skill readers are able to cover up to 20, 20, one letter spaces per fixation. Now here's a different question though. Why do we move our eyes while reading in the first place? Well, this is because of our visual acuity. And the reason we move our eyes is to bring new information into our focus field in order to be able to analyze it in detail. And in order to perceive information in detail, it has to be in our foveal region. Now, around that foveal region, there's also a parafoveal region. And after that parafoveal region is our peripheral vision. So these are three completely different things. Now, in order to put these things into a perspective, if you put your thumb in front of yourself, this is about the size of your foveal region. And depending on the distance that you put it in front of you, you see that it actually covers anywhere between seven to 20 letter spaces. Now, if you put together two thumbs, this is about the size of your parafoveal vision, that diameter. And beyond these two, that diameter is our peripheral vision. And information from the peripheral vision and the parafoveal field is not with the same focus and detail as it is from the foveal region. However, this does not mean that we are not gathering information from there, not at all. In fact, we don't need to actually focus a lot of the words in the text. Why? Well, because we guess a lot of them from memory, from reading experience, from previous understanding of the topic of the text. Now the question is, how much of the words in a text do we actually skip? Well, I would say a considerable amount. First of all, we have content words, which we fixate on 85% of the time, but then we have function words, which we fixate only 35% of the time, meaning that more than half of the time that we encounter them, we don't look at them directly. Now, this also has a direct correlation to the length of a word, where two to three letter words usually are fixated no more than 25% of the time, while words which are eight plus letters are almost always fixated. As a general fact, around 30% of all the words in a text we tend to skip entirely. Now, there are also other factors that come into play here. First of all, the frequency with which words appear in a text. Lower frequency words we tend to fixate more, higher frequency words we tend to skip naturally. Then there's the general predictability of a word, meaning that if we recognize a phrase or an expression, we might as well skip the words in it. And then we have something more peculiar, which is related to the age at which a word was imprinted in our memory. Meaning that words that we've memorized from earlier age, we tend to skip more often. Now naturally, 
if we take all of this information, skipping words equals reading faster, which means that we're able to read faster based on our previous knowledge of the subject of the text, as well as our overall mastery of the language in which the text is written. Now, speaking of speed, the average reading speed is 250 words per minute, with the standard range being between 200 and 400 words per minute, and those who are considered more skillful readers tend to be between 280 and 310 words per minute without sacrificing any comprehension. And everything beyond 500 words per minute is reported to start coming with a trade-off at the expense of comprehension. Also something interesting is that the first and last fixation on a line, we don't do it on the outskirts of the line, but rather inwards, five to seven letters into the line. And the first fixation on a line tends to be longer than the last fixation on the previous line. And and also the visibility of the text around your fixation point is important, especially in the direction in which you're reading. So if you're reading from left to right, then it's important for you to be able to see the upcoming text to the right. If you're reading from right to left, then it's important for you to be able to see the upcoming text from the right. And the same thing goes if you're reading from top to bottom. So it's important for you as you're moving downwards, the text again to be visible. Now here's something else that you're probably already aware of. Not all movements that we perform are forwards in the text. We also perform backwards movements. These backward saccades are called regressions, and they represent around 10 to 15% of all the saccades that we perform while we're reading. Now the reasons we perform these backward movements, or regressions, may actually vary. And the two general types are short regressions. These we perform whenever we didn't process a word properly, or we didn't intend to actually skip it, so we go back to it. Or we can have long regressions, which are more than 10 letters back into the text, and we do these if we didn't understand what we were reading at all. We all have been there. However, better readers are not necessarily these who make fewer regressions, however, they spend less time in regression, because they're better able at pointing their eyes accurately at the spot that they lost themselves instead of endlessly backtracking through the text. Good readers are focused readers. And there you go, 23 science-based facts about reading from more than three decades of research. And of course, there's a lot more to all of it, and I will be going into greater detail in each and every one of these in the future, and you can find also additional resources in the description below. But the one thing that I wanted to achieve here is to present to you a collection of items for you to use to better evaluate, have a more objective judgment about the information that you come across related to reading, and maybe pose better questions in your own research. And if you want to see something discussed at greater length, something for me to dissect for you, you can leave me a comment with it in the comment section below. And also make sure that you share this video for someone who needs it and know that we'll make use of it. At any rate, at this point, I thank you sincerely for watching, keep it bright, and I'll see you all next time.